Hey, Redeemer, we have someone very special with us today. It's a dear friend of mine and brother, Nicholas Cotnois, all the way from Montreal, Canada. Did I say that right? Yes, you did. Okay, I don't know French, but I said his name right, and I said Montreal right. We, Cotnois. We can cut this later, right? Um, Nicholas, tell us about the ministry that you're in in Montreal. So I'm a, a, a pastor at a Baptist church in the West Island of Montreal, uh, near the airport. Uh, so Montreal is an island about 40 miles uh, wide and we're on the west side completely. It's a, a French sector and English sector. Um, there's a lot of uh, uh, about 200,000 in that part of the West Island where, where we're living uh, in that area. So um, uh, I was born uh, two miles from the church, uh, moved around in my life, but, but the Lord providentially um, had me in, in my hometown, uh, basically uh, pastoring the church. Well, what's the name of the church and how long have you actually been at the church? Uh, so the name of the church is Église Baptiste Evangelique Emmanuel. So Church Baptist Evangelical Emmanuel, if you want literally. So we just say Emmanuel Church. Yeah. Uh, and the church has been there for 40 years. It's a plant. Okay. Uh, a church plant that was planted by uh, my grandfather. My grandfather was pastor of our mother church and he sent uh, elders and the pianist and the treasurer to start Emmanuel 40 years ago. And uh, I've been at the church for 27 years now. Wow. Uh, and I started at the church, um, I arrived, I was a, a teenager or 18 and uh, starting, uh, you know, doing my studies as an engineer and started doing custodial at the church. That's a Star good start. In that's ministry. a good start. It's a good start. Uh, started right. custodial, yeah. uh, started <laughs> serving and, and, and cleaning. And um, the, the elders asked me to uh, come and help as a uh, assistant to the youth group and eventually asked me to take charge of the youth group. Uh, so that's how I started. And I did my courses at the same time. So I was trained from within. Mm -hmm. We have a local seminary that does a church-based training. Mm -hmm. And that's how I was kind of trained from within, uh, starting in the year 2000. Okay. Um, and uh, by the grace of God, I've been, um, I started as a trainee and eventually work my way into serving and taking more and more responsibilities uh, and then now I'm pastoring the church today. So you're the lead pastor now after yes. all these years. How, how many years now have you been the lead pastor? Uh, since uh, 2010, so maybe almost 15 years now. Wow. So then you come from a long line of pastors and those in ministry. Tell us a little bit about that. You said your grandfather. Right. Do you have other family members who are in ministry? Uh, yes. So uh, my, like my father uh, and and Several members of our family are elders or, or involved in the church, mm -hmm. but uh, I have uncles that were pastors, also president of the, the Baptist churches in, in Canada, the 500 churches. One of my uncles was a, a president or, okay. or the director, if you want, of the, the churches. Wow. So uh, a little bit like uh, the Southern Baptist Convention, similar mm -hmm. to that, but in, for, for the churches in Canada. Not Southern. No. Northern. Northern. <laughs> yeah, Northern. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Absolutely. Very good. And so your your family also has an incredible tie with um, Grace to You, mm -hmm. does it not? Many of you are probably familiar with Grace to You. That's the preaching ministry of John MacArthur, and we have some connections here to that great ministry. But you guys have been a pioneer in Canada with that ministry. Right. My grandfather, um, so he's second generation believer. Um, my great grandfather converted in the late 40s, one of the few believers because Quebec was very a, a dark place mm. with a few believers. Even today, uh, less than 1% of Quebec wow. would be uh, born again believers. Mm. And, uh, and so again- this is a frontline ministry. Oh, absolutely. This yeah. is the, the, the most unreached place in North America. Okay. It's the province of Quebec, which mm -hmm. is a state, if you want, mm -hmm. in Canada, uh, to the east, uh, northeast of Canada. Right. And uh, very few believers uh, and, and um, so my grandfather was, my great grandfather converted in 1949 uh, and my grandfather a few months later and uh, felt the call of the ministry mm -hmm. and began, began to serve and was trained also locally uh, by uh, Pastor Phillips that was the, 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 the pastor mm -hmm. at the time. Uh, and uh, But my grandfather in his ministry became discouraged. Mm. And um, one of his friends, Bob Holmes from uh, Western Canada, recommended that he go to a, a, 
a shepherd's conference okay. that he would go to to hear. I think it was uh, it was before the shepherd's conference uh, here uh, out here in California. Okay, uh, I think it was in Chicago. M- MacArthur was speaking there. Okay, and yeah. uh, my grandfather, who was a little depressed and discouraged. Um, after listening to a few tapes, went to the conference and was extremely moved mm. and, and uh, said to John MacArthur, wrote to John MacArthur, said, we need to have uh, this ministry in Canada. Okay. There's a need yeah. for, for English and French speaking Canada. So that's how uh, my grandfather in writing and uh, John came up 12 times to the province of Quebec to, to John MacArthur to, to, to preach and to teach for conferences. And the ministry began uh, of Grace to You Canada uh, since then. Wow, so your family has been super involved with Grace to You in Canada mm-hmm. for several decades then. Yes, absolutely. My, my uncle is still the acting, uh, the director of, the, of Grace to You Canada. Uh, what kind of audience, as far as numbers goes, does Grace to You Canada impact? It's difficult to, to calculate because right. 90% of Canadians live within an hour of the U.S. border. So most Canadians actually live very Mm -hmm. south of Canada. So Uh often our radio stations will will do both. They'll do and Canada and U.S., the northern cities of of, of the U.S. So it's kind of hard to evaluate exactly how many people some of the radio stations are actually joint. So the airways will go on both sides of the border. So it, it's it's difficult to say, but it's a, it's a f- uh, thriving ministry, uh, and and we're always amazed at how the Lord has blessed. Uh, also today, a lot of people are, are downloading off the internet, right. so um, it's not just over the airwaves or ordering material, but actually people are, are listening to sermons That's online. Great. Do you do any of that? Do you translate it into French then for the Canadian French? There's Canadian? 500 messages approximately that are translated into French, uh, but John is on the English airwaves. Sure. French material is very hard to go by. It's a, there's a publishing house in Quebec that's translated 80 of John MacArthur's books, but they also translate also uh, all kinds of other materials sure. from. Uh, uh, Ligonier uh, mm-hmm. ministries or from uh, uh, Nine Marks ministries to make sure that French Canadians and also people from uh, mm-hmm. French speaking Europe, France, uh, Belgium, uh, Switzerland, or even uh, Africa, mm-hmm. uh, French speaking Africa, North Africa, South Africa, um, would be able to have good materials in French. Wow, that sounds like a, a huge impact that you guys are having among the Canadian churches and among the Canadian people in such a hard to reach area of the world. Another hard to reach, much like the West Coast, much like the uh, the Southwest that we find ourselves in, even though um, there's a lot of churches, there's not really a lot of Christians per se. Absolutely. Yeah, so. Quebec is a very secular society. Mm-hmm. So uh, it used to be very Roman Catholic mm-hmm. and the quiet revolution in the 70s, people abandoned the local, mm-hmm. the, 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 the Catholic church. Mm-hmm. And uh, a lot of people uh, now, the, the, the government, it's very pagan, very mm-hmm. uh, atheistic. Mm-hmm. Uh, you would ask an eight-year-old today, who is Jesus? He would not be able to answer that question. Wow. He doesn't know who Jesus is. Mm-hmm. Uh, before the 70s, people were raised in the Roman Catholic Church. At least God existed. It some semblance of, a, of an idea, but it's completely this is not, today it's post-Christian. Com- yeah. Exactly. No, no yeah. religion taught in school. Uh-huh. only morals right. and ethics but but God is absent right. there is no moral law giver right. that God is not part of the equation well Nick and I first met we were both in the expository preaching program at TMS and that's how we became fast friends and really enjoyed our time together and became good friends there as far as expository preaching goes how is that what kind of an impact has that had in your church? Has that always been the tradition in your church since you've been there? Yeah. And do you see it? Uh, you know, here it's rare. Uh, it's rare to have that type of preaching um, across America, per se. Maybe used to have a, a greater impact in America, but not as much anymore. Do you, do you find people being drawn to that? Do you, do you find what types of challenges do you have in regard to that? Yeah, so so the like less than one percent believers. Yeah, uh, not as many resources, obviously, as mm-hmm. as uh, you would have here in the English speaking wor- world. So um, expository preaching is it's not uh, commonplace mm-hmm. for the local churches. Uh, topical preaching. 
um, uh, preaching, you know, books of the Bible, but kind of uh, uh, hobby horse, uh, picking what we want, mm -hmm. uh, preaching what we like to preach. Uh, books, also preaching, uh, not books of the Bible, but using um, popular culture, Christian culture books right. to, uh, to influence uh, preaching series. Um, so us, for the most part, I mean, we, we will do the topical mm -hmm. sermon uh, or the, the thematic sermon uh, once in a while. But oh, for the most part, we're preaching uh, expositionally, uh, verse by verse, uh, mm -hmm. a pericope by pericope to make sure that we're teaching the full counsel of God. Sure. So this is part of our beliefs as a church. It's been done before myself, but they sent me to the master seminary mm -hmm. to do the demon with you, to yeah. encourage and uh, to strengthen uh, my teaching uh, and to make sure that I would be faithful uh, as an expositor myself. What other types of challenges do you have in Montreal as far as being a Christian witness and as a church that is decidedly evangelical and not liberal, you know, for instance. So, so we have, we, since we're, we're few, we have a few resources. We try to, to yeah. work together. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and this has been, this is a challenge, uh, how to work with different churches that have the same beliefs, mm -hmm. but, but at the same time, we're, we're so few and far between. It's hard to get, even in, in one area of the city, um, to find another church that has similar beliefs, you have to travel uh, sometimes uh, 20, uh, 30, 40 miles. Yeah. So that's, um, uh, it's definitely a challenge to put, uh, put these uh, churches and these people together. Mm -hmm. I would say another challenge is to, to develop our own leadership. This mm -hmm. is why it's such a, uh, so important. I really want to thank um, Redeemer Bible Church for your generosity mm -hmm. towards mm -hmm. our church because the funds that, that that you have given to us, we use them in our training, our ministry mm -hmm. training fund, right. where we, we want to train uh, men for the work of the ministry, future elders and pastors in our churches. And this is a real need for our church uh, and for sound churches in our region is not only to work together, but to develop our own leadership. We don't have the, the seminaries, we don't have the resources. We have a local seminary that is church-based and that sometimes um, there are challenges with this seminary. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're trying to develop some stuff on our own uh, to train men. So we're really appreciative of all the support and encouragement that Redeemer Absolutely. has been for us. Well, we're definitely like-minded in that regard and, and kind of feeling the same type of rarity you know there's one percent of christians but then what you're really talking about is that an even smaller percentage of christians who would be like-minded and be uh, have that robust understanding of the gospel and the mm. sufficiency of scripture and the preaching of god's word on a regular basis as opposed to other forms of of maybe a, a lighter approach or a more liberal approach if you would right yeah. Yeah. What are some ways that we can pray for you as a church? We'd love to pray for you and continue to show that support, uh, among other things. Well, thank you, Todd. And, and um, pray, I would obviously say to pray for the, the future elders. We've been praying. This is something we, we constantly bring before the Lord, not only for our church, but we believe we're a tree nursery. We use the word pipinière, okay. which is a tree nursery. Right. So we believe that uh, part of our role is to, to start growing the trees, and once they're at a healthy, mature, we want to transplant them to start new churches, and new churches need strong leadership. And so this is a, is a key component, not only for our local church, mm -hmm. but in the sending of men. Yes. Uh, we have a, a servant and training program okay. that's been going on for the past years, and we've sent out uh, five men over the years, and we want to continue and hopefully uh, wow. exponentially send more yeah, men. Right. Uh, we have in our 80 Baptist churches, uh, French Baptist churches in Quebec, we have 20 churches that are without a pastor as we speak today. Okay. So if we had 20 men, we could send them out just to fill the churches that, that have already no, a need. That are already yeah. in need of sound leadership. It's not Th even church planning. This doesn't even yeah. count church planning. Right. Exactly. Wow. So if we want to, to saturate, if we want to make sure that the gospel mm -hmm. spreads in the province of Quebec in a needy place, we need workers for our local churches now, 
but also for the churches we want to plant. Th this is a prime uh, prayer request, and we, we, we ask you to continue yeah. to, to support us in prayer for this request specifically. Reminds me of the prayer, the workers are few, but the harvest is plentiful, and so we need more French-speaking pastors. I was amazed to hear that, that, that Nick didn't preach that many times in English. You, you know, you're fluent in English, yeah. but you preach in French. 98% of the time, right? Almost exclusively. It's yeah. Even, I, I'm sure you hear my accent a little bit. I'm, I'm, I'm French Canadian. <laughs> I actually uh, almost never, maybe mm -hmm. maybe uh, five or ten times in my life, mm -hmm. preached in English. I always mm -hmm. preach French as my mother tongue, and, and I read my Bible in French, and I preach in French, and, uh, you know, I know the verse you say in French. I don't <laughs> <laughs> Tell it to us in French. Le, la moisson est grande. Il y a peu d'ouvriers. So the, the, the harvest is, is plentiful and there are, there are few workers. I like it. I like it. Sounds good. And, you know, I know it was heartbreaking in your youth. The Montreal Expos moved out. We won't add that to the prayer list, but we will uh, have a moment of silence for that, that pain and tragedy. Yeah, well, Mon Montreal, uh, Montrealers love <laughs> hockey. That's our number one sport sure. in, in the province of Quebec. But yes, we did have the Expos that we loved. Mm -hmm. I went to see several Expos games. Now they're, they're in Washington, D.C., unfortunately. So Yeah, yeah, too bad. Well, maybe one day you'll get an expansion team up there. That's what they're saying. Sure. So <laughs> uh, all kidding aside, we're so grateful for uh, the wonderful ministry of Nick and his family and the, mm -hmm. and the legacy that's been there and just the like-mindedness, being able to find like-minded churches mm. uh, that Redeemer can partner with to see the gospel continue to go out and just praying for those. I Just thinking about those 20 churches that are churches already, but they don't have a, a French-speaking pastor that can exposit the word to them. We gotta pray for that. We gotta pray for multiplication in that. Mm. And we're just so blessed to, to know Nick. He's one of my favorite guys in the world. He's a great guy and he's serving the Lord there and we're so glad to be in partnership with them. So thank you for checking in today for Hey Redeemer and we'll be back again.